are just days away from the 2024 NFL Draft in Detroit. The three-day event is serving as a blueprint for planners when the draft comes to Titletown next year. When our event uh, planning, uh, we're in crowd management. If, if our event turns into an incident, then we're in a crowd control situation. Tonight at 9, how public safety agencies are gearing up to keep the massive crowds under control in the NFL's smallest market. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight at 9. Detroit City officials expect to see more than 300,000 football fans participate in the three-day NFL draft starting next Thursday. The Motor City has six NFL cities within a four-hour drive. Buffalo, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, and Chicago. Visit Detroit is anticipating a crowd similar to last year's draft in Kansas City, if not exceeding that crowd. The NFL is laying out a draft footprint of about 2 million square feet in downtown Detroit. Green Bay is used to hosting 75,000 people on a Sunday during football season, but that number could more than triple next April when the NFL draft is here. As the Green Bay area prepares, public safety agencies are taking a closer look at the risk assessment to see what they can do better. Emily Matesik shows us how. Crowd management versus crowd control. That's the topic of discussion during a training for law enforcement and venue personnel in Green Bay this week. When our event uh, planning, uh, we're in crowd management. If, if our event turns into an incident, then we're in a crowd control situation. The training comes as Green Bay, which already deals with big crowds during Packers games and other events in the stadium district, is preparing to see upwards of a quarter of a million people converging on the area for next year's NFL draft. This is part of a much larger project to plan for the 2025 NFL draft. Uh, we need to make sure all of our training and managing big public events is up to date. Green Bay Police are the host of the training, inviting Texas A&M Engineering Extension Service and the National Center for Spectator and Sport to present crowd management for sport and special events. Working with FEMA and Homeland Security, the training offers concepts and tactics to help communities plan for any size event, putting procedures in place in an effort to alleviate problems. Just here this morning, we were talking about line cues and, and how we form lines to come into a venue and the flow rate at which people enter a venue. If people uh, aren't real happy coming into your venue, they're going to cause issues outside. Uh, and then that ends up taking resources away from inside our venue. Law enforcement has to respond to put out something that may have been, uh, could have been better planned. While the national recommendation for crowd management is one crowd manager for every 250 event attendees, it's not always possible. Green Bay Police recognizing this is not a major metropolitan city with endless resources, which is why training like this is important ahead of the draft and something city officials will be thinking about and analyzing as they head to Detroit next week to observe the 2024 NFL Draft. What you don't want to do is just assume that because we're an NFL city and we do these events all the time that we we got it all figured out. So there have been lots of those, those things I know that I've taken away and our team has taken away from this training. And I'm sure there'll be even more in Detroit next week. In Green Bay, Emily Matesik, Fox 11 News. This week's training is just one in a series of sessions being brought to Green Bay ahead of the draft. A major incident management training session is scheduled for later this year. Talk about why you wanted to bring this to, to Green Bay. Well, it's a great opportunity to bring us some training not only for the, the Packer season that comes every year, but then obviously we're this is part of a much larger project to plan for the 2025 NFL draft. Uh, we need to make sure all of our training and managing big public events is up to date. I mean, we bring, what, 75,000 people in on Sundays during Packer season. We're going to, what, <laughs> quadruple, more than quadruple that right. crowd. What kind of things are you learning here that you're going to implement? Well, there's a lot uh, to learn in terms of risk assessment for events and looking for those places where we can take some simple action up front to avoid a whole lot of risk and headache down the road. Uh, and then just managing large crowds over a long period of time. Things like uh, managing the line to get into the event or uh, alcohol sales or all those kind of things that, that come up during big events with lots of people. You're obviously heading to Detroit next week. How much will you be thinking about this training when you're watching what's going on there and, yeah. then, and then trying to implement maybe better practices here, I guess? Yeah, and I think the timing for this 
couldn't have worked out better because now this will give us a lot to think about when we go over to Detroit next week and see how they've done it. We've already had some contact with Detroit and, and learned from them as they have built the event, but this will just give us a little bit better context to understand what we're seeing over there. Did you have like an aha moment here, this week that maybe something that you hadn't thought about or maybe something that you were like, wow, we, we should maybe do it this way versus the way we're doing it already? Yeah, there's all you can always learn something, and what you don't want to do is just assume that because we're an NFL city and we do these events all the time that we've we got it all figured out. So there have been lots of those those things I know that I've taken away and our team has taken away from this training, and I'm sure there'll be even more in Detroit next week. I know there's, you know, I see you, Green Bay is here, Brown County, I see you have on Fond du Lac. How much will you rely on those other agencies come draft time? Well, we're all going to have to work together to make this work. You know, this is probably the smallest city, metropolitan area, to host this event ever, certainly in the last several years. And so, you know, when you're in Detroit and you can throw a 1,000 police officers at an, an issue, we don't have that option. So we will all have to work together here in our neighborhood to make this event. But we're going to do it, and we're already having those conversations. And... You know, we have those relationships in place already where I'm confident that we'll be able to, to make this a really good event. And this is more so kind of on the preventative so that you don't have to be as reactive, right, when you mentioned the lines and right. the different things. Yeah, and, and in this kind of work, if you're doing it right, a lot of times people won't realize you've done anything at all because they'll be able to come to the event. It'll be safe. They won't have to worry about, about any of those issues. And they'll just be able to do what they came to do, which is enjoy a really good event. I understand there's more trainings kind of leading up the next several months leading up to the draft as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. And we'll be working with uh, not only public safety and public partners, but obviously as we start to get closer, we'll be training a lot more with the Packers organization themselves, so we're all on the same page.